Oh, I guess it almost seemed to be stuck, but it's clearly not. There's another one that does seem to be stuck in that tunnel there. <gasps> Could that be a good gas trap? Interesting. Anyway, hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. So if you go down the tunnel here past the nether fortress, the little weather, the wither skeleton trap area, and come down this thing. I've got another mine cart that goes down this way to the taiga, modified taiga on the ice farm, but more importantly and closer to home is the Pyramid of Giza. So this was a monster project. I wanted to build the scale version of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Honestly, to get kind of a sense of how big it was, how big it is. Uh, so it's kind of monstrous here. And the, the, flying around it this close makes it kind of look small, but it's not. It's it's kind of huge. Um, the footprint is, is the right footprint. Uh, the slope is a little bit different, so it's actually a tiny bit taller than the real one. Uh, I covered the whole thing uh, with uh, stairs to sort of emulate the casing stones that uh, that were put in place in on the real pyramid uh, but it's just it's just monstrous here you cannot you can't really see the whole thing at once if you get far enough away to be able to see it you see parts of it don't render <laughs> um, it's just it's too big so let's get back inside because the sun's going down. Let's go up over the top. Barb makes things put uh, Dr. Who Tardis up here. And now that it is starting to get dark, you can see the entrance. The entrance on the pyramid is slightly off center on the south side. So that's what I've got going on here. There we go. So here's the entrance. There's another entrance down at the base of it called the robber's entrance where, where grave robbers kind of broke in. Uh, but come down here and this is the, the entrance, the, the pathway is like super cramped. So I kind of made it so that you kind of constantly bumping your head going down this path. But this goes down to the bottom chamber. We'll come back up and look up there. Um, I built a a door into the interior of the pyramid which is not a real part of it and then I also started digging another underground chamber here which is not part of the actual pyramid but this here goes down below ground so this goes below what they call bedrock um, and down to what they think maybe was supposed to originally have been the burial chamber which apparently is in a slime chunk I did not know that. Hello, Mr. Slime. I mean, you are being sacrilegious to the history of this great wonder of the world. There we go. And then, <clears throat> so this was a this was a chamber that was dug out and left unfinished. They call it unfinished. And there's another little tunnel that was built out alongside to the north. Uh, that kind of ended up not going anywhere. And the thought was that this was originally supposed to be the Pharaoh's burial chamber um, and that the unfinished tunnel pathway down here was going to lead to the Queen's chamber. But then they changed their mind. So up to this point in the history of Egyptian pyramids, the burial chambers were always underground below the pyramid itself. And they think partway through the construction, King the Pharaoh Khufu changed his mind and decided that he wanted the burial chambers to be up inside the pyramid, which apparently caused a fair amount of trouble. 
engineering trouble. So we have then this chamber, this little path that goes up vertically up towards the interior of the pyramid from the entrance. And it goes up here uh, into, there's three chambers up here. This one's called the Grand Gallery. And I think I did a pretty good job of sort of representing it, representing it. And they think this was used to hold the giant blocks that were used to block the passageways uh, after they finished construction. So we're up inside the middle of the pyramid here. And then at the top here, lined in rose granite, is the king's burial chamber. And this is where the sarcophagus was. And it was also made out of rose granite. So this is the king's burial chamber. <clears throat> and if we go back down to the bottom of the grand, oh, and there was a, in this little cutout here, there was a big stone that was put up in here. And after they buried the king, the stone was lowered down to block this tunnel. Um, and then down at the bottom of the gallery, if we then, there's another horizontal passageway right here. But if you take that, leads to the queen's burial chamber. which is here and it was it was structured in in this way i've done it done a pretty good job now they have started to think that there is actually another big void of another big room or chamber inside the pyramid that no one's discovered but they're having trouble figuring out where it is and part of how they figured that out is they put a uh neutrino detector i think in the uh, inside the queen's burial chamber so i put it here as a daylight sensor because this is the closest thing to it in the game and they think based on that that there is another large chamber somewhere probably above this somewhere they're not positive and they don't know how to get to it or get better images off of it without damaging the pyramid so they're of course not going to do that so that's all the sort of historical recreation part of what I've done. I made a little hidden doorway here. Bloop. <clears throat> so that is the Grand Gallery. Let's get a better angle over here. That's the Grand Gallery. Queen King's Burial Chamber and the Queen's Burial Chamber. So this was the inside, the footprint of the pyramid. I did flatten it out. Um, I left this a little bit rough, hilly, because there was a village inside the footprint of where I was going to put the pyramid, and I kind of and I preserved it. So this is still here. Of course, there's no. It's not a village because there's no sky axis, so there's no villagers or anything. But uh, the only villagers I have are the ones that I brought in through the Nether from the village breeder. So I have a, a pair of villages here that I could use for breeding here if I wanted to. Of course, I would need to give them sky access to do it. But that's that's what these two nitwits are here for. And then back here, I have... <clears throat> and that, I've got them in boats because it's easiest to move them around in boats. So here I've got these guys were farmers brought over from the, the artificial pyramid under my base. So these guys probably all have potatoes in their system, which is fine. And then these two guys I brought over, they were potato, they were farmers, but I thought I had grabbed them before they grew up. And my hope was that I would have, um, that they wouldn't have anything in their inventory. Uh, so then I started planting carrots here and they, uh, they started farming and would occasionally plant a potato, which I would then dig up and grab. And eventually I think I got them cleared out. I think they just have carrots. Um, but they, they, they may have potatoes. It's hard to say. So I've got a little farmland here. Of course, they're not doing much farming because their pockets are full and they have no one to feed. So that's good. And then I've got, uh, I've got some cows here and some bunny rabbits and these bunny rabbits have spawned inside the pyramid. Um, so I've got, I've got live, live organic bunnies. And then I had sheep here and I've got more live organic bunnies that just spawned here uh, and inside the pyramid I started building a series of what I call um, single chunk farms I would dig a hole kind of like this all the way down to bedrock Bloop. and 
it is digging just a chunk all the way down and I would dig up I would come up with the design for a farm that would only occupy one chunk not necessarily a useful thing to have but an interesting exercise so then so like this is a sugarcane farm as the sugarcane grows it gets harvested and picked up in here and then it comes up item elevator and puts into shulker box loaders and I have shulker boxes full of sugar cane and shulker boxes full of ink sacks because this is a squid farm that will no longer work under 1.13 because we are not in the right kind of biome right here we are in a desert biome and they need to be in a river biome or something like that so this will stop working and I have river biomes kind of over that way so I may build I may relocate the squid farm over there and then this is a one chunk um, cactus farm so I got a bunch of cactus a one chunk squid uh, slime farm which does its thing pretty darn well not the most efficient slime farm in the world but it is generating slime and you only need so much slime <laughs> And then over here, uh, this was more of an interesting experiment than anything else. I have a uh, sheep farm. Oops. And some of this I need to tear down, but I've got sheep of each of the 16 different colors. And the, the idea was that you would hop in this minecart and take it and roll down and use shears and clip the sheep as you go by. And then I've got mine, mine cart, uh, hopper minecarts going underneath of these layers to pick up the, the wool as it falls off and then puts it all into an item elevator that brings it up into these corners. Boop. Um, and then you collect it. It gets really laggy right around here. I don't know how much of it is the fact that I have sea lanterns which have an animated texture completely lining the walls or all the hopper minecarts, I, I, I just don't know. So uh, I'm not entirely sure what to do about this, but it hasn't worked out as well as I had hoped. But anyway, so this is the, the Great Pyramid of Khufu. Let's move along to the ice farm and the, uh, the modified Taiga Island. So at the end of a, a minecart ride down here, I have this area, which is just a big area that I decided to just dig out underground. Made a little speed mining area and it worked out. So I dug out two beacons worth of area, found a spider spawner. And so I made a little uh, spider farm here, a little string farm. Um, and played around with digging out the stone down at the bottom of the world down to bedrock and periodically putting in some lava as lighting and putting black glass on top of it I think this looks super cool and Barb kind of took this idea and built it around in her in her uh, slime farm which we'll get to which I think is super awesome um, yeah don't have a whole lot of plans for this space down here potentially could do something got chunker boxes full of stuff here that I don't know what uh, I should clean up after myself but I don't really have plans for much of this anyway um, and then another pile of them over here so it's kind of what happens is you end up with piles of chests that kind of don't really do much of anything for anyone I should clean these all up but I mean choker box is just full of andesite and diorite and it's probably a choker box is full of stone here at some point too. Anyway, so that's that's all that. So if I ever need a string, I come AFK here for a little bit. Um, let's go check out the other portal. So this portal goes through to a island that I found while just exploring in a boat. And this is a taiga. This island is like a taiga biome. And you get wolves here. There's a wild wolf right there, and I haven't been killing them off. I've been killing off the pigs and and sheep and other stuff that spawn here, but now I've got a ton of pooches, wolves that people can come and tame if they want. 
it's a good size it's a good sized uh, taiga biome and I've gone in and sort of dug it out um, so replaced everything that isn't grass with grass and started uh, filling in this so like this is a down here goes down to a cave but I don't really need the cave anymore hi buddy um, so I'm just covering all this with grass you can see some of it's still growing in um, but and then uh, coming out here and at the edges are a beach biome of course so what I've been doing is coming in and looking at the F3 this is beach this is taiga <laughs> Uh, so basically, if it's taiga, I put in grass. If it's beach, I put in sand. And uh, that way I sort of maximize the use. And in some cases, the taiga extends out into the water. And so I've been filling in that in. So this is cool. Um, it's a good place to come and get dogs if you want. I have plenty of dogs. Then I decided to build this, which is a ice farm. And to do that, I decided to mostly make it out of snow blocks. So I needed a snow farm. So, hi, here's my guy Wendell. Uh, he's, and so you dig away his uh, snow there and he creates snowballs and then you can form those into snow blocks. And you need tools, so a wooden shovel is perfectly good for farming the snow blocks. So I plant a, a big dark oak tree there so you have wooden shovel to be able to do all your mining, all fine and dandy. And when I had plenty of them, I found a spot that was all like a cold biome, a taiga biome, all that completely encompassed an entire chunk. And I built essentially a one chunk farm out here, but it's in a cold biome, so and it's high up, up enough that water freezes. So let's climb up here. So up here we have our ice farm. It's a single chunk, as I said, uh, but so I've got water along the edges, along two edges, so it'll form in the water when you when you get done harvesting the ice. And if you have your pick, you can go and pick up the ice and blah, 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 lots of ice. One, once this completely fills in, it gives you four stacks of ice, which is pretty cool. And just single chunk. Yeah, single chunk. So there we go. Okay, sun's going down. Is it nighttime yet? Net Slayer is still on. Let's see if. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, you just logged off. Oh. Huh. I wonder if he's having connection troubles. Okay, so one other thing to look at while we're out along here is. Oh, I should, maybe he lo logged so that I could sleep. I don't know. Anyway, so out here I found this village, which is very interesting. Um, and it's all completely over water. <laughs> so it actually... Ow! Um, so yeah, it generated this entire village out over water. So I came in and I did a little bit of rehab on it. I, I surrounded it with fences so that the the these guys could have relatively safe place to be and they couldn't get uh, eaten by zombies. And this guy is farming. What is he farming? Potatoes. Good. Oh, wait. There's wheat here. I'm sorry, sir. This is a gluten-free farm. Huh. Okay. So I've been fighting that. One of these guys has uh, wheat seeds in his pocket. And so he's causing all sorts of havoc that way. But so it's interesting. Uh, there's some more wheat right there. Okay. Oh, I see some over there. Goodness gracious. Potatoes, potatoes. Oh, this is weed as well. Huh. Beet roots. Oh, man. 
Okay. Anyway, so I'm going through and try to get rid of all the weeds, but it's probably a losing battle. But anyway, um, so this is just the goofiest village I've ever seen. I rehabbed out the whole thing so we can get on the large side, but the thing is that because of this, this, the distance here between these doors and the next doors over this way, all the way over there this isn't part of the village so and I haven't been able to lure villagers from there over here once one of them comes over here I think it'll light up these and it'll become one huge village but it just hasn't happened yet uh, and there's plenty of doors here there should be iron golems and everything but um, but yeah hi so Anyway, just a goopy village. Haven't decided much what to do with this, if anything, yet, but I think it's kind of cool looking. So that's it for this. Come on. Come on. I run out of runway. Ah! Ran out of runway. Okay, we can launch here, right, please? Oh, there's the village, okay. So anyway, that's that's all of the stuff out in this corner of the world. Next time we can go down another path and see what's down there. So, anyway, here we go. From the modified Taiga Island, this is Theron. It's been Minecraft Land Party. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Alright, bye.